Hello everyone, and this is Math 2 of Earth and Life Science. Hi, I am Dr. Erwin, and this is Erwin's World. So, kung bago ka lang sa YouTube channel ko, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will always be updated pag may mga bago tayong video. So, this time we will be talking about origin and structure of the Earth the subsystems of the earth. So this is ELS MELT 2. Explain that the earth consists of four subsystems across whose boundaries matter and energy flow. So what are these subsystems of the earth? Can you guess them? Can you name all of them? So let us see. So we have atmosphere, we also have geosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is composed of about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases. These gases are found in layers of troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere, defined by unique features such as temperature and pressure. The first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere, where it starts at the Earth's surface and extends 8 to 14.5 kilometers high or 5 to 9 miles. This is the part of the atmosphere which is the most dense. And almost all weather conditions happen in this region. So when we speak of weather conditions, this include typhoon, storms, rain, hail, and other atmospheric phenomena. The next layer of the atmosphere is the stratosphere. It extends up to 50 kilometers high. So you know what is the importance of this particular layer of the atmosphere? It is simply because it houses the ozone layer, which absorbs and scatters the solar ultraviolet radiation. The third layer of the atmosphere is the mesosphere. It is the mesosphere which is just above the stratosphere and extends up to 85 kilometers high or 53 miles. In this layer, meteors burn up in this particular layer of the atmosphere. The next layer of the atmosphere is the thermosphere. So it is located just above the mesosphere and extends up to 600 kilometers or 372 miles high. Actually, it is in this particular layer of the atmosphere where we put our satellite in the orbit of the Earth. So meaning to say, when NASA or ESA or any other space agencies launch their satellites on Earth, so it is put in the space in this particular layer of the atmosphere. The last layer of the atmosphere is the exosphere. This is the upper limit of our atmosphere. It extends from the top of the thermosphere up to 10,000 kilometers high. So since this is the upper limit of our atmosphere, we can say that this is the boundary between the atmosphere of the Earth and that of the outer space. Next subsystem of the Earth is the geosphere. So the geosphere actually is divided into crust, mantle, and core. So let us talk first about the crust. So just like it's like an egg, no, uh, a hard-boiled egg, wherein the core is the egg yolk, the mantle is the egg white, and the crust is the shell of the egg. Now, this is the outside layer of the earth that is made of solid rock, mostly basalt and granite. It is actually in the crust where humans live as well as other life forms. So there are two types of crust, the oceanic crust and the continental crust. 
Um, basically, oceanic crust is denser and thinner and mainly composed of basalt. Meanwhile, continental crust is less dense, thicker, and mainly composed of granite. Now, let us talk this time about mantle. So the mantle lies below the crust and is up to 2,900 km thick. So it is consists of hot, dense, iron, and magnesium-rich solid rock. So the crust in the upper part of the mantle make up the lithosphere, which is broken into plates, both large and small. The third subsystem of the Earth is the hydrosphere. So it is actually the total amount of water on a planet. So, it includes water that is on the surface of the planet or of the earth, underground and in the air. So, when we speak of those uh, water found on the surface of the, of the earth, no? so it includes those in the rivers, ocean, lakes. So, lahat tong nasa ibabaw. Now, when we speak naman of that water underground, so it is those found in the underground water system. Um, meanwhile, the water found on air is actually the water vapor. So the last subsystem of the earth is the biosphere. So the biosphere is made up of the parts of the earth where life can be found or otherwise all ecosystems. So when we speak of all ecosystems, so all ecosystems on earth, this may include those in the desert, those in the tropical forest, on land, on water, on air. So basically, our discussions a while ago about geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. No? So this particular subsystem of the earth contain also the different ecosystems. So we have ecosystems on land, ecosystems in the bodies of water, and there are also organisms in the air. So basically, when we talk about biosphere, it encompasses all the subsystems of the earth. So though we did not tackle a while ago that there are organisms in the hydrosphere, in the atmosphere or in the uh, geosphere because what we are talking about those subsystems are the physical and chemical compositions however it is in this biosphere the last subsystem of the earth where we can tackle the different organisms the ecosystems found among those other subsystems of the earth So the illustration that you can see shows the interconnection or interconnectedness of the four subsystems of the earth. So it is known to be a subsystem because the main system actually is the earth system. So for example, many birds in the biosphere apply through the air which is the atmosphere. Meanwhile, water, which is the hydrosphere, often flows through the soil or the geosphere. So, in fact, the spheres are so closely connected that a change in one sphere often results in a change in one or more of the other spheres. For example, volcanic eruptions that may happen in the geosphere can have an effect on the biosphere, let's say the organisms that live near the volcano. Or it could also have an effect on the hydrosphere, let's say the earthquake can cause a tsunamis. And then there will also be an effect in the atmosphere since it will emit uh, lots of gases. So in short, in one activity of one subsystem, it will have or it may have an effect on the other systems. So with that, we can say na uh, the four subsystems are connected so that we can be able to uh, provide the necessary uh, environment for the living things to survive on Earth. Okay, so I hope that you have learned something on this video. So in case that you have any questions, just leave uh, your questions in the comment 
section of this video. So kung nagustuhan nyo naman, uh, do not forget to share and hit the subscribe button so that you will always be notified kapag may mga bago tayong video. That's it for now and goodbye.